So this is very interesting to me because I think this is the moment, the way that I think about it in my foreign policy terms, when the American government goes from protecting American capitalism to capitalism, right? Where, where you get this na- nation state based military force, which was very much organized for the previous entirety of the of the nation's history around uh, uh, you know nationally situated business and there's this shift to a form of multinational at the time or global capitalism or or or, or um you might put it so i'm curious what you think of that yeah, that's and, very and interesting I to, and i just want to relate it directly to the, the the question of financialization because what i just mean by that is the uh, uh, increasing abstraction of currency as something that creates value and how that might interact with these larger shifts in American domestic political economy, and then also what's going on in terms of like global capitalism as this extraordinarily complicated uh, poly crisis prone uh, system. Yeah, no, I, I I really like this characterization of um, detecting a shift between different kinds of capitalism. So rather than saying go prote- moving from protecting American capitalists to capitalism as such, like maybe one could say that uh, you know the embodiment of capitalism as such shifts in this period. So at the beginning of the seventies, you still have a kind of you know post war white goods and cars as the epitomization of both American capitalism and capitalism as such, consumer goods, you know, mass produced, but and tailored to specific um, tastes and so on, that's capitalism. And as a result, it's export based, it's uh, based on manufacturing. And that's, I think, what you see in the background of the 71 decision. You know, the worry is about the dollar being too strong. Uh, the goal is to you know weaken the dollar in order to make exports more competitive. Um, and 71 is the first year in which the U.S. shifts into a current account deficit. Up to 71, America ran a current account surplus for the entire 20th century. So something shifts there. And so what does it shift to? Capitalism as such, yes, but also capitalism in the form of banks and uh, financial services, right? That's now, the, the new, by the end of the 70s, and certainly in the 1980s, now the embodiment of American capitalism isn't Ford anymore, but it's, um, you know, the equivalent of Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan. Uh, and you right. see banks Selling exploding during this period. Capital. Yeah. Exactly. And, and just, to, just to kind of link that back to the dollar, you know, Arguably, financial services are the one industry for which it is not true that a strong dollar reduces their export competitiveness. So, you know, something that is bad for manufacturing might very well be good for financial services acting globally. These kind of banks that are operating in Europe, creating dollar loans, you know, for them, a, a strong dollar is not only not a problem, but it's in some way a feature rather than a bug. And I think that characterized the entire shift, whereby by the 1980s, the strength of the dollar isn't a concern anymore in a way it still was in 71. So I want to relate this to the earlier thinkers in your book. How do Marx and Keynes in particular come out in, in, in terms of what's happening? Because my understanding of Marx is that he, he predicted something kind of like this. Uh, and Keynes, I think, might have might have predicted something along these lines, but the effects of that were very different. So could you just relate what's, what's happened? Like, what's the big takeaway from the 70s? And how does that relate to this larger story that you told in the book? Yeah, I mean, the starting point for answering that question should be that the 70s are often seen as kind of the death of Keynesianism, like that, as if the 1970s proved Keynes wrong. Whereas I think the exact opposite is the case um, for two reasons. First, it's not clear um, how much of a Keynesian in the kind of strict American sense Keynes himself ever was. But also because the system um, that, you know, we refer to as Bretton Woods, yes, had Keynes as one of its authors, but f- fundamentally de- deviated from Keynes's own proposal in crucial respects. So Keynes, I think, would not have totally been surprised by the development of the 1970s 70s, and would have found some, uh, some form of indication, um, not least because he has insisted um, that the dollar's dual role as one country's currency and the global reserve currency just um, inhabits a tension within the entire system that is unsustainable. And that's exactly what, what Nixon in 71 essentially reveals, that there is there is a tension that requires either some carrying of the you know, hegemonic burden, like living with the Triffin dilemma and this kind of stuff, and, you know, essentially living with U.S. monetary policy that is made for the world rather than for...